Hello, Arthur. Hello, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> so good to have you here. What does looking back at this show remind you of? Oh, many, many things. You know, I, uh, I must say that one of the things that's most outstanding in my mind is the fact that the show has lasted so long and picked up so many new viewers along the way. It's incredible. Now, on this show, you were saluting Bill Robinson. What was his impact on tap dancing? Oh, I think he had a tremendous impact on tap dancing. He, you know, it, uh, he goes back so many years and did so many wonderful things in show business. In fact, um, you know, there is a National Tap Dance Day on the 25th of May, which honors Bill Robinson. Really? And I just happened to finish doing um, a show. I was uh, up in San Francisco. I was invited up to participate in a show uh, honoring him as well as Tap Dance Day, along with some wonderful people, Rosie Radiator and the Guinness World Champion Red Tap Team. And we had uh, just a wonderful time up there. What do you think of the young dancers today? Oh, they're tremendous, tremendous. They've, they've taken tap to a new level, and they're, they've introduced a lot of new styles and, uh, into tap dancing, which are just tremendous. I only wish I could do them. <laughs> <laughs> I think you hold your own with anybody, Arthur. <laughs> Who are your idols? Oh, gosh. Uh, Mary, I think I enjoyed just about every dancer that, that uh, appeared in motion pictures, and I got a lot of my learning for, you know, education from that. You know, Bill, Bill Robinson, and I had uh, Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly, the Nicholas Brothers. Oh, the, oh gosh, there were so many that... Uh, I just uh, absorbed all I could from, from the motion pictures. In fact, I used to go when you could get in for a quarter, you know, and, and see the movies, and, I'd, and they would run almost continuously throughout the day, and I'd go as early as I could, and then have to send the sheriff to find out what had happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> now, is it true that when you were a little boy, you actually considered becoming a pharmacist? Yes, well, as I, you know, thank God it didn't happen. <laughs> but, Where uh, did that come from? <laughs> well, I, I worked for a, uh, an independent druggist at the time and made deliveries and helped out in the, in the uh, pharmacy and whatnot, you know, with people finding different things in the drugstores. And, uh, and you enjoyed it? Yeah, and I enjoyed it. And the pharmacist thought I would, was, would be a good candidate in that department. And I'm so happy that I didn't do it because I stumbled into show business in the, when I was 13 in the seventh grade, and I've enjoyed every step of the way. Well, you were one of 13 children as well. Right. So that was a big family. I'm looking for another 13 there. You know, the thing's running. <laughs> so like, maybe that's a good day for me, 13. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of my only friends who can honestly say they're an international star. You've performed all over the world. I have some points here I want to ask you about. You were on television in Ireland. Yeah. Go oh, Ireland. I did it in uh, Blackpool. I did Eurovision in, in Blackpool. How did in that England. come about? Oh, gosh. Well, it was all of these things evolved after I went to Australia on a 10-day tour with Jimmy Rogers and ended up staying for a year and a month, and I had met people along the way. Uh, uh, Lou and Leslie Grade, I met two were big investors in the Wonderful television producers. station in, uh, in Australia. And they had, uh, at that time, they had big shows going in London. And he said, if you ever get an opportunity to come to England, we'd like to use you on our show. Well, I had had my ticket round trip from LA to, to Australia, and it was a little to change it, and I decided, well, I'll never have this opportunity again. So I decided I would go around the world. Well, made, after making contact in Australia with all these various people, I had introductions on different places. So I went to Hong Kong and the, the back way to Europe and got to Europe and decided, went to see some friends I had known, and they had a restaurant. They put me to work, and one thing led to another. It was a tremendous ride. So you were at the Nile Hilton in Cairo. Yes, I was booked down there at a big international agricultural convention, and gosh, I worked uh, in Beirut, Lebanon, at the Casino du Liban, and that was a fantastic gambling casino, and uh, it was just incredible. What about Switzerland? 
Oh, yeah, well, that's where I, I ended up. That's where I met the friends that uh, put me to work in their restaurant called the Kenley. And it was a trio schmied, and they sang like the modern ears, that type of thing. And, uh, oh, gosh, uh, uh, I used Switzerland as my base. I lived there, and I worked all over Europe and whatnot. I also understand that you did some USO tours with Bob Hope. They were mainly, you know, the Christmas tours, and then I did a couple of tours with him here in the States. I bet you feel appreciated doing something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's very, very heartwarming, you know, and, and uh, of course, Bob did it, uh, uh, Bob Hope did it uh, for years, many, 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 many years. Where did you go with him? Oh, gosh, I went to Japan, I went to... Uh, Korea, the South Pacific, went to Alaska with him, and numerous times down to Arizona, where he was very involved in raising money for the Boys Club. You've met some fabulous people. Y yes, I have. I, I have. remember you telling me you had a great experience when you worked on Diagnosis of a Murder. Yes. Which was with Dick Van Dyke, but it was before it became a yes. series. Yes, well, they uh, been, I, I, I knew Danny Daniels and other people that I'd met along the way, which you, as well as many, many people in the dance world, you know, meet these people. And uh, he was instrumental in, uh, in uh, getting me on on that show because he did the choreography. And uh, and uh, since then, many things have happened as a result of that. You actually got to dance with Dick Van Dyke, though. Yes. And I got to tell you, Dick Van Dyke learned the routine, Danny Daniels and put it together and helped him work out this little routine. And and uh, Dick at the time was having tremendous back trouble. He had, uh, when he met Chitty Chitty Bang Bang in England, mm, sure. he got sick or, or had an accident and they x-rayed his, his uh, body and the doctor told him, he says, in three years you'll be in a wheelchair. Well, Dick didn't sit still for that. He says, I'll have none of this. So he learned the routine after after that in traction, as, as well as on his back and whatnot. Danny Daniels and I did the routine, and Danny's wife filmed it from the back. And we only had maybe two one-hour sessions, and he did the, uh, the dance perfectly. Oh, what a great experience. Uh, yes. And nice man. Extremely every once nice in a while, man. I catch you on Columbo. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> that was enjoyable. Well, uh, you know, Peter Falk was just great to work with. I've worked with some real wonderful people. Do you have you know, any particular favorites? Oh, gosh, I think just uh, about everybody I work with. You know, you get kind of involved, and then you discover how, that there are a lot of wonderful people in you the business. You worked with Sammy Davis Jr., didn't you? Yes, yes, in in the film tap with uh, Gregory Hines and whatnot, so. What a... Talented, talented man. Yes, yes. He so, brought a lot to the table when they did that film. What are you doing these days? At this moment, I've had uh, calls that people wanted me to go to Brazil and do a, a few master classes and perform, and I've had them calls from Germany. So tap dancing is worldwide. It's even in Japan. I had a young lady that came from Japan, and uh, I studied with her for about, uh, she studied with me about, for two months, went back to, to to Japan, and she was a performer. And she learned very quickly, and she did very well. So you're still doing your tap clinics? And oh, yeah, once in a while, one time permits. Do you enjoy and, passing your knowledge on? I, I do, but it's it's a lot harder than performing, because I'm, I'm more of a performer than a teacher, and everything I teach is physical. I can't break it down properly, so if I teach a class, two classes for say an hour and 15 minutes each, I'm constantly moving and dancing for two and a half hours. What do you still want to accomplish in your life? I don't know. I'd like to uh, keep on doing what I'm doing. I have that much fun and enjoyment in it. Well, we sure want to see you keep on doing what you're doing, because you're the best. Well, thank you so much. You're very generous, and <laughs> I'll accept that. <laughs>